Hello. Make sure it's up and running. All right, we live. So today I am going to make a shower cap. Now the shower cap, I'm going to use fabric, of course, to make it. It was a wonderful viewer by the name of, what's her name? She inboxed me. Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. So Rebecca inboxed me and she sent me a technique on how to make a particular um, shower cap because she needed it for personal uses. And when she gave me the, um, it was actually a picture. And I was like, well, sure, let me make a video of this. I'm just now getting around to it. So I was like, okay, well, let me just go ahead and go live and do it. And yeah. So as you can see, I already have the base of my bonnet cut out, which is a circle. I normally use one of my stencils that I make because paper, I can't really keep up with paper like I used to. I just throw them away. Anyway, so you fold once and you fold twice. This is something I've done many times over here, okay? And then you place the pattern on it and you cut around this side because all of this is going to be open all of this is going to be closed and i cut any of this only the circular part you cut that off and then bam you got your base so now we're going to take it up a step step that's my heat price let me know it's ready so i got like a little mini one i do have a bigger one but this mini one do what it need to do to get nice and hot and I'm just going to um, get some of these crease out with my little heat press machine. I mean, my little mini Cricut heat press. So, um, welcome to Sewing Saturdays. We up in this joint. Um, so, shout out to Rebecca. Rebecca um, asked me about this technique. Well, she sent me the technique in a blog post. And I decided to go ahead and make a video, like a live. So I'm here, that's what's up. All right, so it's not perfect, but I have to add more heat to it, so anyway. Now, what I ended up doing was getting this longer roll of um, plastic. And I had to go to Amazon to get the longer one because this is the length that they sell in the store. And if you see, it's a little shorter. I needed a little bit more um, length to it. Now, these these ones, they're like the dollar store ones, you can use, like, if you're going to, um, if you don't mind, like, overlapping it and putting it up there. But this one, I wanted it to be a certain length. And it's, I still might end up doing a little bit of overlapping, but this one gives me a little bit more to work with. I'm going to lay this out. Let me get my own. Um, my old faithfuls. Keep everything in place. I don't have to do all that fighting. And I'm just going to cut around this circle because this is going to go on the outside of it, of course. All right. So. So, with creating the shower cap, 
I know you can, um, I haven't quite tried this method, but I thought about doing it because it don't, I mean, it makes sense, but, okay, so that's my part that's going on top of this. Now, to create the sides. Now, personally, I prefer to um, add like a bias around it. And so what I did to measure my bias, I'm going to go back to my little folded state that I got going on, okay? And from here to here, I measured. And I multiplied that by four, and I got about 80. It was close to 80. So because I didn't have fabric quite that length, I'm going to join these two 40 inch pieces together. So they're like 40 by four inches. And this is just my, my preference. Um, some people prefer to um, cut it circular. Like you can, you can literally like make this one wider by four inches and cut it that way if that's what you prefer. Um, so this piece, I'm going to join front facing. I'm going to take it to my machine and I'm going to stitch a straight stitch across it to join it together. Don't forget the back stitch. Now, for this piece, what I want to do is press open the seam because when I, um, this is going to be, again, it's going to be a bias. So, when it's time for me to put my, um, my whatchamadickies, my elastic, that's the whatchamadickies, my elastic through. I'm going to have to um, be able to fit it through without this being in the way. Did I cut it off? Oh, I think I changed the temperature. Okay, I'm going to put it on two for right now. I don't think I need anything hotter. But yeah, so again, I created a bias. So I'm going to fold it once. Now again, you can always cover this with this. But for me, making this shower cap i think it's going to be a little bit easier because i'm still playing with the technique for me to fold it and do what i need to do this way first because if i cover it up it's not um i'm just gonna have a hard time let me see i'm gonna try it for this video we're going we to try something new. You seen it here first. Because I've never um, really considered adding this. Because I'm so used to being able to fold it. I might. Um, you know what I might do instead? I might go ahead and cut this in half. And then do it. So let me fold it this way. Because that way it will be less. Let me alter my pattern. Fold this in half. Because instead of making it four inches wide, I'm going to make it two inches wide. That way I can just fold it. Okay. Fold this this way. And I'm just going to cut it straight up the middle. Hopefully, I'm going to get some heat in this place. What I'm sure while I'm cutting. Yes, I can't find any of my good scissors, so this is what I'm stuck with for right now. So 
So yeah, I, instead of making it a four inch by 80, I'm gonna do a two inch by 80. That way I can just go ahead and add my um plastic to it. And we're gonna try to take it today because honestly, now that I think about it, if I sew it, I don't really have to worry about the um, the edges spraying or anything. I don't think. So we're gonna try that out. We're gonna hope for the best. Okay. But anyway, that's not the technique I normally do, but we're gonna do that today to try something new. Because like, you know, the whole purpose of making a shower cap is to have the entire cap plastic, you know, because you don't want your hair wet. Put this one down. So. Off my strip. There we go. All right. So this one, of course, is wider because it is cut for something that's wider. So we're just gonna work with it. Press it all the way down. Continue holding your left and make the plastic off of it. Line it up. Press it down. Of course, I'm gonna have to cut the extra plastic off, but I'm not worried about that right now. Get to it. Okay. So now let me grab my other piece that I have cut off. And it's not really um thick. I think I was more so concerned about it being too thick. So I'm gonna have to um change my needle right quick to be able to use this plastic. So this is plastic right quick. This piece right here gotta come off. Right here, because it's my ankle. Now I'm going to add this piece to it. Okay. So if we have to, we can overlap that. That way you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And we can keep going until we get to the end of the piece. So yeah, my piece is too big, but it's fine. Uh, hold on a second. I gotta go check something right quick. Hold on. Let me pause for one moment. Okay, I'm back. Okay, so now we're gonna cut the plastic off. Okay. 
Just this time. I don't talk to myself. I'm talking to somebody else. <laughs> okay, so we almost finished cut this thing, honey. Okay. Anyway, that's all. I love you for all three. All right, so this is the piece. And what I'm going to do now is turn it with the fabric facing up. And I'm going to take my um, machine and add some heat to it. I'm not going to do too much, but just enough for it to adhere to it. And it's going to like fold and stuff like that. But just hitting it with the heat. It hears the um fabric down. So that's what we're gonna do. And when we get to our piece that's split, I'm gonna press that one down again. I pressed it earlier, but And it gets a little warm while you're sliding it through, but either way, um, I'm going to do it one more time to make sure I get the ends too, because they matter. So the prep time is really the um, tedious part because once you start sewing, it's, it's not really that bad. All right, so that's going to be my body. And it's looking good so far. And so when it's time for me to sew it, of course, I'm not to fold it in half. I'm so accustomed to being able to fold it and iron it. That's going to be the hang up for me. But with the plastic being up there, I don't see it being that bad. You know what I can use? I can use my um, clips. I have no idea where they are right now. But some wonder clips would be great to like just put on the side. Anyway, so we're going to cover the front. 
And I love to um make sure this one because it's a cotton, it just has so much lint on it. Just like a lint magnet. And yeah. So my piece that's gonna go up here is right here. Fit it. Make sure where it needs to be. All right, so the pieces that aren't covered, when I do this, you can always go back and put like an extra piece on it. Um, honestly, once you put that on top of it or around the side, it really doesn't matter. That won't be too much. Okay, now I gotta try to get this off of here. Come on, Pam. Come on. Ooh. Why am I struggling so hard this time? Smooth it out. Smooth it out some more. And I'm not really worried about that little bit. You flip it over. Because this is the side I'm going to iron. And I like to um, iron it outward towards the end. So if like the bubbles and stuff get a little crazy, you can push them out.
one more time. to be peeled really good. Oh, I got that in my last chicken. Yeah. Okay. Put that back to the side for now. Let me change my needle right quick. The needle that I'm using is a bit heavier than my others, so I'm trying to do it all here. So yeah, I put a heavier um, needle in. The only heavy one I have right now close to me is a denim one. So I put a denim because I'll be sewing through a few layers. So when I fold that, this in half, that's two, and then that's going to make three. So it's a bit to um, have to penetrate. Yes, I thread the old school way. I don't do all that other stuff. I need to start letting my machine do it. Okay. So, with this already ironed, oh, that needs my heat right now. So, to get everything started, Now, I am still going to hunt to find some um, and this will be um, longer for me to use. That way I don't have to cut it the next time. That would be amazing. bit on this
It's a prep song for me. Every time. About an inch away from the beginning and place that on the machine. Okay. Back stitch, and I am going to use a zigzag for this part, just this part right here. Do a wild one. While I'm working, I'm curving this because, of course, you got to work with the curve.
and away from Oh, it might be a clock for it. I go back over because like I said, this is the first time I use this technique. I kind of see why I don't use it. But we're going to make it work.
Ahí me estoy So then, I'm just go ahead and add the um, elastic to it, and I left a hole open for that. Right here, I'm gonna do it. Run it all the way through. And that's it. Yeah. 